Transformation is everywhere, no matter it is an office software or professional designer kit. You use it every day. But do you ever wonder how is it represented in matrix format? Let's go find out. In this video, I'm gonna cover scaling, reflection, sharing, and rotation. Oh, where is the translation by the way? That is a bit different and you will find out at the end of this video. How come a matrix has a geometric semantics? My favorite interpretation is to see the matrix vector multiplication is to change the basis of the input vector. This is a scaling matrix. The first column of this matrix denotes how is the x-axis stretched. The second column indicates how the y-axis stretched. Let's take a unit square as example. If I want to scale my object twice bigger in the x-axis and also twice bigger along the y-axis, then the scaling matrix is this. The x-axis 1, 0 got stretched to 2, 0. The y-axis 0, 1 got stretched to 0, 2. So this is the destination where the axis landed. Here it goes. Here's scaling twice bigger. Here is a matrix to shrink the size to half. You can also have a non-uniform scaling. Now we talk about reflection. First, start with reflecting over y-axis. The matrix is merely flipping the x-basis vector to another direction. Numerically speaking, reflection based on the y-axis is to put the x-basis vector 1, 0 to negative 1, 0 and the y-basis vector 0, 1 stays still. So this is the destination where the axis landed. Flipping the x-basis vector over the y-axis just like this. Reflection over the x-axis is pretty much the same. Just flipping the y-basis vector over the x-axis. Numerically speaking, the x-basis vector stays still while the y-axis got flipped. We can also map to the destination and here reflecting over the x-axis. Next, we talk about sharing. Similar to the reflection, the sharing also has horizontal shear and vertical shear. Let's look at the horizontal shear matrix. Notice the x-basis vector isn't changed while the first value of the y-basis vector change. We can have an analogy of pushing a deck of cars. Two things you can notice. First, the width of each car doesn't change, which aligns with our x basis vector doesn't change. Second, you see the height of this deck of cars doesn't change, which aligns with the y value of our y basis vector doesn't change. Then we can interpret the s is just having an effect that is it just push a little bit or is it push a lot of it? The vertical shear is similar. You get the idea. Now comes the last matrix and we're almost done. The rotation matrix. Suppose you rotate the square with a certain degree theta. How would you measure the new x and new y of the x basis vector? Yes, you use the trigonometry function and the angle theta. The new x of x basis is cosine theta, and the new y of x basis is sine theta. For y basis vector, it's pretty much the same. Just notice the negative sign of it. A counterclockwise rotation with 90 degree will be like this. Now let's get back to the question in the beginning. Where is the translation? Notice the four matrices we talked today. You see, no matter how they are transformed, the origins stay still. But the translation works more like a vector addition. Could it also be expressed in transformation matrix? The answer to this is homogeneous coordinate. I'll explain this concept in a future video. If you want to know more, please don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you around.